hello guys and welcome back to my channel and today we have this infinix smart 7 hd that is got water damage but the technician didn't tell me anything about water damage probably because the customer did not tell him so the first thing to do when you have a phone like this is to properly clean the phone and as you can see i have cleaned the phone okay this phone is not powering on this phone is dead so i have cleaned the phone and the phone is looking very clean all right so make sure you clean with your pcb cleaner when you are cleaning this type of phone so that you can be able to assess all the components visibly to see what is going on on the mobile pcb okay now the next thing is to turn your multimeter into diode mode after cleaning and drying up your multimeter into diode mode then we are going to take reading of the vibat line and as you can see it's giving a short reading okay when you get this type of reading that is a short reading and the negative side always reading to ground as fine but the positive side of the battery terminal is reading short to the ground okay it's reading short to the ground as you can see the reading your multimeter might be beeping to or having a kind of beep or buzzer sound all right so it's the same thing with this reading that is a short circuit reading that means the pcb has a full shot the pcb has a full shot the next thing is to do the next thing to do right now is to connect our alligator probe and monitor under our thermal camera to see where the shot is okay so now injecting my voltage if you want to know the actual voltage i'm injecting is in my online training make sure you join as you can see the red spot shows that there is a shorted component on that area which is um on the ic area that means that ic needs attention as you can see right there from the thermal camera the power ic is shorting okay and um because the power ic is shorting okay we need to um pay close attention at the component around as well it is very important but because this phone is having a case of liquid damage and all that so um first thing is to take reading on the component around it this capacitor is shorted this capacitor is fine this capacitor is fine this one uh, let's let's read this one this one is also fine okay so um there's a capacitor i removed from here earlier but you um this line is short even after the capacitor is removed so that means we're having more capacitors that are shorted and this capacitor is also shorting okay i'm um, using my intuition because the phone has liquid damage i'm thinking of reballing this power ic i'm going to remove it right now and i'm going to go ahead reballing the power ic okay because from the thermal camera it's showing that there is a red spot from this section okay so um it is very important that you guys know this okay when water enters into a phone or into an ic okay it can go it can go under the bgas and bridge things together look at this side and the upper side that's a sign of corrosion under the ic so we are going to clean the ic reball it but before we put the ic back there's something important i want you to pay close attention to but first let's go ahead and clean the the, the power ic and go ahead with the reballing so if you want to learn more about reballing and how to troubleshoot properly as a technician i will advise you to join our online training that's when we are going to train you properly on how to know all these things okay especially reballing and proper troubleshooting of uh, mobile phones all right so contact us on the number on the screen for physical training and for online training the same number is going to work perfectly all right um we are already cleaning the the, the ic after reballing and we are going to reflow it because it is very important to reflow after you are done from your stencil so that the the balls the bgs can sit properly all right so now let's take another reading on that vibat line because we have removed the power ic remember so let's take reading and that line is still shorting that line is still shorting take a closer look one more time and that's a short reading and this capacitor earlier it was short and now it's still shorted okay you can see it's still shorting so the next thing to do now is to apply the rosin flux on that area okay 
But before we apply Rosin Flux, let's try and monitor on that Tama camera and see which area is eating up first. But if you don't have Tama camera, you can just apply your Rosin Flux all over that area, okay, to see which component is eating up. And still on that area where the the, the, the stuff is eating up is still the same place. So now I have applied the roasting flux. If you want to learn how to apply roasting flux, I have a video on my YouTube channel. Please go there and watch it. Now let's see the component that is going to melt. Okay. And you see that capacitor. That capacitor melted, melted instantly, melted instantly. All right. After injecting the voltage, if you want to know the accurate voltage to inject to fish out the bad culprit, please make sure you join our online training. I'm going to remove that capacitor right now and I'm going to take another reading. Okay, we're going to take another reading on the VBAT line. So let me get my multimeter and let's take another reading. Now the negative probe on ground and the black probe to take reading on the VBAT line and the short is gone. 0 0.4 voltage drop. That's a very good reading for a VBAT uh line so make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for that amazing troubleshooting so now the next thing is to replace that capacitor now i have my donor board i'm taking out a capacitor on and i'm going to install the capacitor that i removed from it is very is always very very important that you install the capacitor that you remove once you dictate the capacitor as a short always try and replace it so now i'm putting back the power ic you remember i have already rebought the power ic so i'm putting it i'm installing it back on the pcb now i'm going to take another reading before i proceed to power on the phone if it's going to work or if if it's not going to work if it works then we are lucky if it's not going to work then we continue the troubleshooting that's how troubleshooting is sometimes troubleshooting can take you can, can take you hours sometimes two days three days okay so all the, the very important thing is for you to be patient and take things easy when it comes to troubleshooting. Don't rush. Don't rush yourself, okay? So let's take another reading. And 0 0.4 voltage drop is a very good reading on the VBAT line, okay? That means the short is gone. Now, hit the like button and subscribe. Our line training is still very much available if you are interested. If you want to um, develop and grow more in this mobile phone repair journey, DM us on the number on the screen right away. Now let's put let me plug my DC power supply to power on this phone. Okay. I'm going to power on this phone right now. Let's see if it's going to work or it's not going to work. Okay. All right, let's go. Pressing the power button right now on my DC power supply. I can see that the phone is powering on, but the screen right here is not displaying anything. Okay. Let me show you from my DC power supply to, to see that the phone is on. So when you see this type of reading on your DC power supply, after pressing the power button, that means the phone is booting properly, okay? So possibly this phone, this, the screen is damaged by the water or by the liquid that got inside. So it is uh, very important to uh, get a new screen and test it. If it doesn't work, that means your troubleshooting should continue. But I'm going to give it to the technician that gave it to me. Thank you for watching.